Today's guest is Jonathan Mendoza. He was actually one of my first guests on this podcast, uh, but since it's been so long, I thought it would be wonderful to have him back on the show. Um, He's a personal friend of mine. He's located in Austin, Texas, and Jonathan is just one of the most passionate people I know in in the area of health. Um, A lot of people in the health world just absolutely love Jonathan and his whole team and everything that they've brought together out there. So let me tell you a little about him. Um, He started out actually with a a degree in kinesiology and exercise science, then went on to become a chiropractor, then went to get his bachelor's degree in nursing and then his master's and became a uh, nurse practitioner. So um, when I met Jonathan, he was running what was then called the MSW Lounge in Austin, which was just an amazing hangout meets get your health optimized place. (laughs) Um, The lounge there, he was pretty well known for doing blood labs and then giving specific protocols, IV drips, uh, supplementation um, based off of what you actually needed, which was really cool. Um, He's really well known for his supplement line also, which it will link up in the show notes, MSW Nutrition. There's a lot that he has to offer and he's just a wealth of knowledge, which he has now turned into his clinic is called the Nurse Doza Clinic. He's gone by Nurse Doza for a really long time on social media and he's offering really amazing deals on being able to get help from him starting at just a dollar a month. It's basically like open office hours. You can join his uh, school of dosa and get basically anything you want to ask him on there. So really cool um, offer. He's always been that way. He's very big on like building community. Um, He's run the How Do You Health Festival for many years in Austin that I got to participate in, which was just incredible. So Jonathan's always like bringing people together and helping people optimize together. And I love that about him. And so, yeah, we get into all sorts of things on this episode. But one of the things that I think um, is a maybe niche interest if you are in the health field and you are wanting to really expand online, he's going to give some nuggets of wisdom on that. But throughout, regardless, even if you're not in the health field, there's just so many nuggets of wisdom about health and entrepreneurship that I know you'll get a lot out of. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Here is Jonathan Mendoza. All right. So Jonathan, the last time you were on the show, it was like episode three or something. So we've evolved a little bit. Three? Three? Are you I don't serious? know. It was like probably the it first 10. It was real early. Um, wow. And you you would have think my background would have improved, but I'm pretty sure I was in my kitchen then and I'm in my kitchen again now because we are in the middle of a crazy tropical storm out here in Hawaii. You're the one who looks like you're in Hawaii out I there. Know. This is, this is this is a fake background. However, this is <laughs> this is our podcast studio. So like uh, awesome. Thank you. Like I, I imagine if it's indoors, the greenery, you know, Hawaii, same mm-hmm. deal, right? Mm-hmm. You got to feel it, right? Yeah, that's my usual background, but we, we're doing the kitchen today. But guys, so the podcast he's talking about, the How Do You Health podcast, podcast is awesome. It's growing. So that's the name of it's it new. still, right? No, no. So you changed it? Too. It changed it, right? So, oh, shit, dude. I didn't know. So it's now we have a spinoff of that. It's just me. And it's called The School of Doza. Oh. And so, so so this is my studio now. So the, it's like there's no guests. It's just me. And I do like a lecture for like 30 minutes or like a health topic. And I'll just go like hear my key points. Why? Give you obviously, you know, some things to take I'm home with. Really but uh, it's been fun. Like it's it's just it's been like 62 episodes, 63, something like okay. that. We labs like, you know how we do it. Right. So it's like, yeah, here, uh, here's AST. And here's why it's important. Here's homocysteine. That's why that's important. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've seen you all those clips, guys. Make sure you follow him on on social media because yeah, it's so helpful. And I wanted to get into some of that because little background, guys. Okay, I'm sorry. Bear with me because I'm like just reuniting with a homie, homie <laughs> in yeah. the business here. So yeah. Yeah. Um, let me give you guys a little bit more background. So I mean, Jonathan, how shall we start? MSW Lounge in Austin, Texas, all, has always been one of my favorite places to visit in Austin. You know, years ago when I first started coming there. You were you know, running labs, doing IV drips, doing supplementation. Um, you were very well known in the industry already for, cert- you know, a lot of your uh, supplements, but especially like, you know, Boost and uh, Liver Love. I think probably a lot of people have used, maybe are listening and already use that product. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, what you I guess where this has come to now, what you are bringing to the world so people can have a little more context on who's talking to them. And then we maybe we can get into some nitty gritty, passionate nurse Doza rants. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Thank you for the introduction. That's, that's elegant. I mean, that was this really great. I, I think right now what we've evolved into is we're showcasing what we're really good at. 
And over the years, my online presence that is now very present uh, has evolved from the idea of like, this is what I've been seeing in clinical practice in person, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So the, the MSW lounge has now changed to Nurse Doza. It's the nice. Nurse Doza clinic, right? Uh, the podcast nice. is now changed to School of Doza. And uh, we now also, which Baldo told you, we have an online school called the School of Doza. And the reason why I I feel that this is how it's evolved is because it's out of necessity. Um, you and I both know what the social presence is like. When we first met, I really wasn't on social media. I mean, you have it as a business, right? And so like you will have, you know, Instagram, Facebook, you know, you know about those ads. Well, I really wasn't big on social media myself. And so I never was on it until I realized like, this is a business tool. This is marketing. You, you if you want to play, you got to be on, right? So, mm-hmm. so I said, okay, well, I'm going to do it my way. And so it's kind of evolved into like, I took what we had in the clinic here and I said, let's put that experience online, right? Like, yeah. the, like I know the IVs were like, okay, yes, that's hard to do online, but <laughs> the lab work, the the consults, like we've done tons of, 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 you know, the last three years, obviously everyone's doing online stuff, but consults online. And then the TikTok thing, YouTube podcast, what's fascinating is you know, one of the coolest things we've ever did in our clinic was lunch and learns. And I think, uh, you know, you probably know about these and, and, and the lunch and learns where, you know, you get to speak and, and you, you talk about a topic, an educational topic that somebody will want to learn more about, and they can use it for their own health and wellness because we're in health and wellness. And so when I was given the lunch and learns for the last, you know, four or five years here, we do it every Friday that clinic, it's an, it's an environment. Like you walk in here yes. and it's a hangout. It's a tree house. Like that's why you oh, love yeah. it. Right? It's a vibe so, for sure. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's one of the coolest vibes you will ever, like, this is not mm-hmm. any you've ever seen it. It's, it's, it's a medical clinic. However, it is straight up a health bar. And so yeah. like when you walk in, we serve you a drink with your IV, you do some brain tap, you do some Opus sound bed, right? You get your labs done. And then you also get adjusted by me, right? Like that's the mm-hmm. clinic of the future and it's here now. However, TikTok, there's people around the world watching our videos and like, they're not coming into the clinic, but they, yet they want the same type of services mm-hmm. and therapies and they want, they want to know more. Right. So mm-hmm. that's, we've done the involvement because now we're, we're helping millions of people now with things like a fatty liver, with gallbladder issues, with, fa- with a, right. a, a leaky gut, with brain, heart, energy, like all that. Right. And I mm-hmm. think it's like what you've realized, you can help more people mm-hmm. online and I guess that's where everyone's asking for help at. I love that you guys still also, though, have your vibe, like you've got your school of Doza, which I want to hear more about. But I, I just have to say, like, when Jonathan says that, he's like, not even, <laughs> can't even say in words. Like, I mean, my one of my favorite things to do in Austin is just go to your place and just kick it. And if you want to have a guaranteed amazing Austin experience, you just do that. And the whole thing just turns into magical. All these cool people come in, talking to Jonathan is a blast. The whole team, everybody, it's just like, yeah, it's it's a vibe. And I love that you have worked so hard to bring that vibe online, right? And so let's talk about this School of Doza thing because also that you have brought online too, right? Like your little Friday lunch and learns. I remember you doing that and they, they were, it was like, damn, dude, you're really like putting your heart and soul into showing up and educating and sharing, you know, like you're not just coasting by, like showing up to work, doing some you know, little, here's an IV drip and blah, blah, blah. Like you have been like busting it for a long time. And now you've busted it to the point of being able to bring this bigger online. So more people can participate in this vibe. So tell us about School of Doza. What does that entail? Thank you. The School of Doza is now um, what I've always envisioned, my ultimate dream. Uh, My clinic, you know, when you start off in practice as as a practitioner, you're like, okay, this is my dream practice, right? It's my dream clinic. And if you're lucky enough to have it come to fruition and actually come to real life, then you're like, oh, wow, that's amazing. Well, how can I take this and, you know, business entrepreneurs, right, scale this? Mm -hmm. Well, due to things like AI and things like uh, social media and where we're at now in 2023, you have the ability to reach a lot of people and get your message out. And the one thing that me and the team and everyone else we've ever worked with, including yourself, you know, we've always said we want to educate. And that's that's what we lead with. It's not that I lead with an IV. It's not that I lead with supplements. It's not that I lead with getting your blood work done. I mean, the reason I, the thing I love doing the most with people is not I mean, the podcast is right up there. The school is going to be the second thing, but it's also talking about labs. Like, mm-hmm. and that's, that's where we started talking together. Mm-hmm. And so what mm-hmm. I found in, 
in, in practice was people want to know more about labs because they're not getting explanation. So the school of Doza is like, well, I should just teach a class nice. on like how to interpret labs. Right. And it doesn't have to be the idea that it's, you have to get a certification to do this, right? It's not like, oh, I'm doing this because I'm going to try to further this. No, we have people who basically have issues with themselves and they're like, well, I have to take an online class because I have to put my health into my own hands because no one else is helping me, right? Totally. And so so that's what the school is. And I, I figured the way that our clinic has been, because it is a vibe, it's a community, mm -hmm. right? The mm -hmm. most important thing that I found out in health is community. Mm-hmm. And and no one will get healthier without a community. And I'm thankful that you're in, in my community and our community. And 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 at the same time, you got to imagine, well, how can we share this community with others, right? Our, our education, our community. Well, the School of Doza is an online school slash community. And like even today, I, I value it to the highest regard. Like at 5.30 p.m. Central Time is our first official class. And it's going to be me in a live classroom setting. I have the dry erase board and I have pictures that I draw and I'm a decent artist. So I like talking about hormones and inflammation. I really geek out and mm -hmm. I'll make it simple. Right. And so the live thing is that it follows up with the Q and a, so you can ask me anything. And like we've had Wednesdays or our office hours, we have students sign up and they ask me anything, you know, we have for half an hour. It's like, ask me whatever you want to, you have a functional medicine practitioner right now in front of you. And you're, you know, at home, you can like in the kitchen and like, I got a question about my thyroid. Right. And what's incredible about it is in our line of work in health and wellness, we say the same thing over and over again, but we say it different ways every day because there's a different way to say it to get through to the individual who happens to be listening at that exact moment. So if you think about it, out of the 10 million, 20 million people that you're going to touch and come in contact with in the next year, you're going to say, wow, what kind of message am I you know, putting out there? I say, well, mine is that I just want everyone to feel great. And I want everyone to experience life to the fullest. And as a practitioner, I have found that I can't give them a pill. I can't fix them. I can't sleep better for them. I can't detox better for them. I can help them do it, but I could show them and then maybe they can do it for themselves. And that's that's how I've looked at the School of Doza is that I'm educating the masses because people want to learn. And if they want a reputable place to where they feel like there's a community that supports them, that's what the School of Doza is. And it's online. And so far... What I like about it is it's been well received. Um, we have a lot of involvement, a lot of engagement, and it's a newer app. And I'm not really tech savvy, like I said, to go from like not having Facebook and Instagram to all mm -hmm. the way to having mm -hmm. a circle app, which that's under, it's under circle. Uh, it's fascinating because it's like Facebook meets Zoom and it's just for the people who are in your community. Mm. I'm looking at the website right now, Jonathan. And also what I'm hearing from you is how invaluable this is because let's say you're a health coach, right? And you want, you're like, I don't know much about labs. I want to learn more from Jonathan. You go in there. Now you've got somebody else. They're not a health coach. They just want to learn more about their own health. And now you're learning from Jonathan. You're also maybe potentially have other health coaches in there, other health professionals, people with actual issues. Like that's super valuable type of community to, for a place of learning. Because when somebody says, well, I have Hashimoto's and I've noticed that when I do this, this happens. And then Jonathan's in there saying, well, that's because blah, 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 try this. Or it might be because of blah, 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 try this. Like that's a really very, very powerful way to learn. And um, website looks really good, by the way. And at least for now, when we're doing this recording, it's you can try it out for a dollar to start out with. So there's like no risk. <laughs> <laughs> to start, you know, it's dabble tuition. your foot in that's, there. That's your tuition. It starts <laughs> off at a and That's, that's so, awesome. But, so the way that you already see it is that's, you see our vision, mm -hmm. right? You see what it's like, like you're smiling, the people are listening, like a school, mm -hmm. honey. How are you going to make something as boring as school be exciting? And you say, well, imagine that if you go to this school, they're going to teach you something that you can actually use and yeah. it can actually make your life better. And, you know, you, you imagine that in health and wellness, we know that there are two things that people want that they will spend their whole life trying to accomplish and get, and it's health and it's wealth. Right. Yeah. So, and, and I look at that, it's the same thing because you won't mm -hmm. have the wealth unless you're healthy because you'll get wealthy. And then if you can't hang on to it, cause you die at an early age. Yeah. You bequeath all that to your, you know, your siblings or your, your spring and or your offspring. And I'm like, well, then maybe what should we be really doing with our health and what does true health look like? I feel privileged and honored that every single day I get to help people get healthier. 
And as a practitioner, I have the passion to say, well, I'm going to teach it in a way to where it makes it simple. And maybe the person is motivated to do it themselves because behavior change is probably the hardest thing and the number one reason why people will fail when it comes to a diet, when it comes to totally. I don't know, maybe just anything, just name it. Just name they're, it. Going right. to, they're going to say, I gave up because, mm -hmm. and, and, and to me, the school of Doza, what I look at is a community and you go back to like, who's in, in the class, like we're, we're going mm -hmm. full on this. So who's in the class, the students in the class. Well, one of the things we notice is that there's a lot of nurses already enrolling. And what's cool about this, you want to talk about a profound effect. One of the things I found online, which I knew was going to happen, was we have nurses and nurse practitioners reaching out saying, how did you get to do what you're doing? Right. Who taught you? <laughs> Who ta I'm taking this course. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking about signing up. Who taught you holistic care? And I say, well, I knew it as a chiropractor. I'm applying it as a nurse. Uh, I'll just teach you. You know, because I, I haven't been in clinic long enough. This is what I've seen. This is what I think everyone should actually just know kids and you know like now i got off some of my medications or like you know now i'm actually going to the gym because you know i'm motivated i'm seeing the results and that's really what it's all about like how mm -hmm. how can i make this more uh feasible for your lifestyle and your behavior mm, 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 mm. yeah it's got to feel good because you know at least for me i i resonate with those nurses or this you know they're trying to maybe get a little more holistic or do what you're doing it's like what I did when I first started out, I'm like, who is excelling at this? And are have they made it available? Is there any way that I can actually learn from them right now while they're still actively kind of winning the game, like really doing well? And you have made that available. So that's speaking to you. Definitely check it out, guys. It's schoolofdoza.com slash sign up. I'll put the link for that. Um, I want to get into a little bit, if you don't mind, just, oh, I know you don't mind. Cause I, I, cause I know you, <laughs> yep, yep. what are the, what are some of the big hitters you're seeing right now in terms of health issues? Like what is like just consuming your soul of like, this is a massive issue. You know, what are big ones for you right now that you really feel compelled to get the word out that maybe we could give some people some teasers of things they might learn about from school of Doza. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what has been heavy on my mind. I guess the last two years being 2023 and probably the last three, four years, even more so um, metabolic health. Okay. And, and you, I, I know you've obviously keto metabolic goes hand in hand, right. right? You talk about health, you talk about losing weight, you talk about hormones It all, it all plays a role, right? Really? Well, I've made it a mission to study metabolic health and, and it's, it's biochemistry, right? Mm -hmm. So, so when I look at labs, I am a mechanic in a way that I will just diagnostically scan the body. So labs will tell me the systems that are off. Mm -hmm. And it's up to me to tell the person, these are how you correct the systems. I apply this or whatever, help to support it. And it can sometimes work. Now, the other thing, what's mm -hmm. fascinating about it, if you think about what most people are dealing with, they don't tell me what they're dealing with. If right. they come in, they don't say, this is what I have going on. They just say, this is the first thing that I noticed today. When right. I woke up, my toe hurts. I woke up, I have a sore throat. I woke up and I have green stuff coming out of my ears. And I'm right. like, yeah, but what about the last week? And they're like, well, I don't know. I was busy. I was stressed out. Blah, blah. I was like, so what's right. the culprit here? Okay. Right. So is it that people, are, and the news will tell you one thing, right? They'll say, all right, well, here's the statistics, right? And here's what I'll see in response to that. So like the news says heart disease is on the rise. Diabetes is an issue, but here's the truth. It's been an issue. It's not like diabetes and heart disease has been like a new thing. Those are like two of the top killers of U.S. adults for the last 60 years, right? Mm -hmm. But you say the simple question like, well, how is heart disease and diabetes connected? And I say, I think it's the liver. Okay. And I and so since we've met, I planted my flag in the idea that I'm like, if I'm going to do one thing for everyone, I'm going to help them get their liver healthier. Mm -hmm. Because biochemically, metabolically, cardiovascular speaking, your liver is the main center operator in your metabolic health. And we do not talk about it to the point of these are the stats. One in four U.S. adults have a fatty liver, may or may not know it. Because according to all the agencies, they say there's presenting, there's no presenting symptoms. Okay, which wow. I, I think is BS because that's <laughs> not true. Right now, the worldwide problem with the fatty liver is that one billion, one billion with a B people in this world have a fatty liver and may or may not know it. Okay, now 
The other side note that we've been kind of been talking about a lot is gallbladder. Now, 1.2, 1.4 million people a year in the United States have gallbladder surgery to remove their gallbladder. And you think about, well, what's the gallbladder connected to again? Oh, it's the liver. <laughs> yeah, it's the liver. And you're like, well, how's that connected? And you say, okay, well, maybe <laughs> there's something going on here with when it comes to your digestion, when it comes to what you're mm -hmm. eating, right? Mm -hmm. and, but then you say, okay, here's the real, here's the real problem we have in our hands. Everyone loves sugar and everyone loves salt. Now, everyone's overweight. Everyone's pre-diabetic. Everyone has heart disease at this moment. And every 65 seconds, someone in this country gets diagnosed with Alzheimer's. These are the current stats right now. So I could wow people with stats and you say, well, what are you going to do about all that? You're a dreamer. How can you change the whole world's view on health? And I say, well, you just tell them you're going to feel a lot better if your liver was a lot healthier, period. And you get it down their throats to a way you say, I want you thinking about what am I doing for my liver today and tomorrow? What did I do for my liver yesterday? Because I can tell you what I think you're doing in your liver right now. And most people say, yeah, I know. I know what I'm doing. I'm like, but do you really? Because right. the, the way that I look at it is insulin resistance, for example, in diabetes, right? Insulin resistance occurs 10 to 15 years before type 2 diabetes comes in as a diagnosis, which means in your 20s and in your teens, even especially for females hearing this right now, if you're a teenager and you're eating a bunch of junk food and fast food, you will be a, a type of diabetic eventually. It might not be like the ones you hear about all the time, but just throw birth control in there and see what happens. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you stay on that trajectory, I mean, come on. <laughs> right. So, so then I say like, okay, I say things about diabetes and heart disease and it gets a couple of likes, it gets a couple of comments. I know, you know, this too, right? Oh, my cholesterol is bad. It's just been bad for 30 years. My doctor I says it's just in my genes. I know. And I'm like, no, but here's the thing. Did you know you can eat healthier fat? My doctor said butter and eggs were bad for me. Now oh, that no. is what we were told for 30, 40 years. Been lied to basically that it wasn't the right. issue. It right. was sugar. It was sugar and, and seed oil the whole time. And if you imagine how much sugar and seed oil is in everything, it goes back to our original problem that everyone loves salt and sugar. And there's no way that we can tell the food companies to kick out the salt and sugar because they're like, it's too cost effective and you're not going to stop mm -hmm. consuming. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I got to give the people what they want. Mm -hmm. So, so we look at it and we say, well, there's no way to replace the everyday behavior. What we say is supplement. So if you go back to the liver and it's been our message all along, if you have a fatty liver, you should be taking supplements. If you have an inflamed liver and your doctor says, yeah, there's some things showing up on your ultrasound. You should think about taking supplements. If you have elevated liver enzymes, you should be taking supplements because they work. I used to see milk thistle uh, given, and I used to see AST and ALT go down within two weeks. Like it just like they know it. Like it's just, yeah, I just take milk thistle and it goes down. Now, if it helps you that much, my real question is why does the liver enzymes keep getting elevated? You know, like oh, I just my diet. Okay, we're cool with that because some people aren't, and so that's why I said okay, I'm going to redirect my attention. I'm only going to talk to the people who really want to hear this. But then when I found out, guess what? All these other people come across, I come across their screen on TikTok, right? Mm -hmm. Like, who's this jackass talking about fatty mm -hmm. liver? Oh, wait, honey, you should hear about this guy. He's saying that all this stuff, it's probably your liver. But he's mm -hmm. saying there's something you can do about it. Like the other doctors and everyone else said, there's nothing you can do about it. You just have a fatty liver now. And that's mm -hmm. the problem we have. Is it apathy or ignorance? Right, right. Maybe a little bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. what's, the, what's, what's, what's the solution to apathy and ignorance? Education, knowledge. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I love that. I love that angle. It's like, there is a lot that we can do through supplementation. Obviously, it's ideal for people to fix their nutrition, but so many people are not going to, right? And if you can at least get it kick-started, right? Then you can kickstart with some supplementation, get that. And they're like, wow, I actually do. I didn't realize like all of how I was feeling so much of that was connected to this one thing that can be the seed for transformation in that person. Like, wow, I wonder how much better I could feel if I changed some other things like, you uh, know, so yeah. yeah and I, and I, I want to comment on that. So I do a lot of consults with people. I mean, one of the things I've always, I used to make house calls for crying out loud. So I've mm -hmm. always done online consults, but what was cool was, um, 
when I talk to people about their weight loss and you know this too, and you see like, it's more of an emotional connection to the sugar and the salt, you know, you're mm-hmm. like, well, what do you want me to do? Are you going to blame me that your diet's not working? Or am I going to blame you for you not following your diet? You know? So mm-hmm. it's one of those cats 22. And then they say, well, they don't understand. They don't see what I'm going through. And you're right. You're totally right. Because the other person in that world, whatever that they truly have going on with them, there could be a chemical imbalance, there could be a nutritional deficiency, whatever it may be. I say, look, I know this, the human body was designed to function at an optimal level. We know this, right? What we know to this day, sunlight, water, hugs, smiles, music, laughter, sex, and maybe some good steak every once in a while, right? That All of that has been known to be beneficial to the human body in some way. And if we don't get enough of those things, our human bodies don't function well. Now, Most people who are overweight don't care about a fatty liver unless it keeps them from keeping their job. Right. And so that's where we say like, okay, let's be real. Like I have people and I love the people who don't, they they don't expect me, put it that way. (laughs) Right. Like uh, I met a guy last year at a KetoCon, which is now Hack Your Health, which I'm sure you know about that. But um, there was a guy that was saying he did the carnivore diet. And he said, "Uh, can I show you my labs? Because people at- you know, keto mm-hmm. con are places they walk around with labs. And I said, yeah, cool. We can look at it. He says, my cholesterol is like 400 and my doctor's concerned about it. And I said, I'd be concerned too. Like, what are you eating? And he's like, I'm eating hamburger patties, like two or three a day. And I said, man, like why? And then once again, I said, the reason why we have a school, the reason why we have a podcast, the reason why we do what we do, we education. He said, this older gentleman, 70 years old, I think, said, I'm doing a carnivore diet because it helped me with my digestive tract. Right. I just said, okay, well, what was the problem? He goes, man, I was going to the bathroom left and right. And now I'm only going, you know, not as, he goes, I'm not going as much. I said, okay, cool. How often are you going now? He goes, well, I go probably like two or three times a week. And that's, you know, you know exactly Mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. I'm like, well, how did you trade that one problem for the other problem? (laughs) Now you're backed up. He goes, yeah, that's the problem. I said, all that cholesterol is backed up in your liver your liver stores and produces cholesterol. And if your liver is compromised, which most people are, I said, there's no way you can process all the hamburger patties. So even though he's listening to all the podcasts and they're saying karma, karma, which I know is anti-inflammatory, I'm like, well, do you like salmon? Do you like sardines? Because omega-3s are wonderful for you. Mm -hmm. You know, just that slight thing of changing, like you don't have to stop what you're doing. Can you just say more salmon? Right. They're like, yeah, I can do that. Done. That was it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's those little little bits of knowledge because people are coming in and, you know, obviously I'm like in the swimming in the pool of like the carnivore messages and things like that. But there's like very often times, how do I say this in the most honest and sensitive way? Um, there's a bit of like proving proving rightness sometimes in, <laughs> yeah. in some of the nutrition communities, you know, like it, it, let's change what everybody else says to make sure that our approach is like, right. And I feel like, you know, while I, um, appreciate the forward thinking, like, wow, maybe we're looking at these things differently. Like there still can sometimes be a lot of dogma of like, well, it's totally fine to have your cholesterol at 400. And I'm like, well, we don't know that yet. Like if you want to be a pioneer in discovering that you can be one of those test subjects. I like that people question things and all of that, but when it trickles down to the general public, I don't think that they realize like, it's like, you are an experiment on that. We don't know that for sure. If it's okay to be having, you know, cause that's what's happening in the carnival world. They're really questioning if I'm sure, you know, like oh, yeah. if uh, cholesterol could just be like super high and that's like really great, you know? And I'm like, well, I, I appreciate your open-mindedness, but at the same time, when you have that guy at KetoCon who's 70 years old, he's just taking your word for it and may not realize that he is a bit of an experiment. <laughs> you know? like, but I see the way he looks at everyone. He stands in lines for the book deals. He's like, I follow this podcast. So what I learned a long time ago mm-hmm. is you and I mm-hmm. both know that there's this responsibility to, right. to, to the public, to the communities, the people you talk to every day and say, look, I want to go about it in one or two ways. If it's ego driving me, you can sense it and you see what it's like out there. I don't think I've ever seen that with you because you realize your story is the reason why you're here today. 
Right. right. And, and my story is the same way. I'm like, I got my own story. That's why I want everyone else to have mm-hmm. their own story, a good right. one, you know? Right. And so right. then you say, I only want to work and be around people that want to feel the same. And, exactly. and you, you develop a new mindset, new community. And, mm-hmm. and what I imagine is most people have never experienced that. And, yeah. and so like, you want to talk about some of the heavy hitters about what I've been dealing with. Let's get into it. So like addiction is a funny word because I don't think addiction is a bad thing. Mm, nice. Okay. Now, when I say addiction, like, what are we really addicted to here? Are you addicted to your phone? Are you addicted to sunlight? And if you if you pick the phone, I'm like, but biochemically, you were designed to be addicted to the sunlight. Like, you just need sun because what happens? And I have to get all geeky with people. Did you know that sunlight goes into your brain when you wake up in the morning, goes to your pineal gland, and it activates the release of things called cortisol, dopamine, and norepinephrine that fuel your energy and focus throughout the day. And if you miss the sunlight at night, here's another bummer. That sunlight will take the serotonin and make sure that at night when the sun goes down, the pineal gland then converts that serotonin into melatonin. Mm-hmm. And if you miss the sunlight first thing in the morning, you miss good sleep at night. Mm-hmm. All right. And it's nothing new. There's, I mean, this is, this has been known, right? So I have to say, how can I convince you to put sleep as the number one, most important thing you could ever put on your health list as for priorities. And people are going to say, yeah, well, I'm going to hack my way into sleep. I'm like, no, you can't. You, no. There's no way you can outrun poor sleep. It's a debt you'll never pay off. Now, here's what I found fascinating. Just uh, I, if you say someone says I need help with my liver. I say, that's easy. Take supplements. The other thing you need to work on is sleep. And if you work on sleep, that's the harder part, right? Because if you detoxify the body from inflammation, stress, oxidative stress, whatever you want to call it, I know that the body was designed for autophagy, mitochondrial biogenesis, mitochondrial rejuvenation. Those are fancy terms for Mm self-cleaning. I can get out bad cells that don't belong in my body if I don't eat Mm -hmm. or if I take a bunch of resveratrol. Or if I do a bunch of cold plunges, right? Or I get the deepest sleep possible and I live in parasympathetic mode all day. Yeah. Right. And so if I say, there's no no way the typical human is going to be able to do that. They're too stimulated. They're too overstressed and they're too depleted because our soil and our food sucks. So it goes back to the addiction. I say, what are you truly addicted to? Because if you come back and say, I'm addicted to feeling great. And I know that sex, sugar, alcohol, porn, and social media, the only way to make me feel good, then guess what they're going to do every day? They're going to run back to the things that give them that little bit of dopamine spike that we're truly addicted to. Mm -hmm. And so if we're looking at the other thing that everyone wants to really throw out, here's numbers. By 2030, the number one killer of Americans will no longer be heart disease. You know what it will be? Depression. Wow. Yeah. We're all sitting ducks for it in in the current current climate. If you're eating quote unquote normal now in the United States and many other countries, I mean, uh, most of the the packaged foods are just their depression in a bag. They're <laughs> talk, they're you know seed oils to food coloring to um, MSG to you know which is high fructose corn syrup uh, fructose. I'm really big on high fructose corn syrup and sugar, yeah. creating that anxiety depression loop because they block the enzyme that helps you break, turn your glute. I don't want, I'm getting like, <laughs> I'm getting like you now, but yeah, you, you want to turn your glutamate into GABA. Glutamate makes yep. you, it's excitatory yep. and then you yep. can't convert. It blocks f- high fructose and fruit. Great. It's that's actually pretty low amount of fructose compared to high fructose corn syrup and white table sugar that are these astronomical levels. And I, I always got, I got curious about that. I was like, why does sugar create anxiety? What is actually going on now? Obviously everything's multifaceted. You can look at inflammation and all these things. But the fact that it blocks the enzyme that helps you convert your glutamate into GABA, I was like, well, that makes sense because GABA will help you feel cool, calm, collected. Everything's okay in the world. Glutamate's going to make you anxious, right? And so we look at these things that these lifestyle components and you're absolutely right. Like for me, sleep, I, I, I marvel sometimes. And I know you feel the same way. I'm like, I'm living a pretty high output lifestyle, but I feel in calm almost all the time. I go in for a short spurt. Like I go walk on the gym, work on my treadmill, boom, hit some intensity, get some shit done. Go, go, go doing this podcast. And then as soon as, as soon as that window's over, back into parasympathetic relationships, time outside, cooking some good dinner, listening to music, you know, like, and when you get into that and and I go to sleep super early, I'm usually in bed by eight, you know, (laughs) and, um, 
that getting in that flow, you, you don't need those like pick me ups. I have a hard time, honestly, probably surprise people, but I hardly consume social media. I don't feel like it. Cause I'm so like full of life creating and my relationships, my kids, like, you know, and that can happen that can, you won't need those things to make you feel better when you are truly feeling better. Um, well, I want right. to ask you, well said, <laughs> well said, <laughs> I want to ask you about liver. I want to go because you are like, I love that you said you were like, I like, I because you're right. Like when you were really hitting on the liver, it was kind of like, oh, okay. Like of all the things that you're knowledgeable about, like wh why, why did you hit this why? so hard? Yeah. So can you explain that a little more? Certainly. The liver is involved in your digestive tract, just first and foremost, but it's also involved in your hormones. It's also involved in your heart. It's also involved directly with your brain, which means that if you think about how the body is designed, we've always centered most of our health and wellness, even medicine around the heart. Like it was really yeah. fascinating. We used to think like the whole body revolved around the heart and we still yeah. kind of do, maybe it's the center of the body, right? But the brain that we know now is a master control system that's basically running the show. But the truth is we still only know about 10% of what it does, right? I mean, I think that hasn't really right. changed much. You could say, oh, we're just going to implant it with something rather than discover what it does. Mm -hmm. But if you say, what does the liver do? Think about this. The liver is the only organ that when healthy, you could cut it in half and it would completely regenerate. Wow. And like I said, there's, really? there's no other organ. I did not know that. Right. So your eyes, that's how I heard it the first time. That's what my eyes did. My eyes got that big. I said, say <laughs> that again? They're like, yeah, the liver is self-regenerating. And I said, okay, so why do 1 billion people in this world have a fatty liver if the liver is regenerating? Mm -hmm. And then- medicine and conventional medicine will say like, well, that's just what happens. It's age. And I'm like, but wait a second. Like if we were to support the liver, could we unlock its potential? That's, that's just how I'm looking at science. Right. And I say, because if it has this potential to regenerate, how do we get there? <laughs> so all the research, all the nutrition that I studied throughout the years led me to the nutrition that I talk about now is fasting. Yeah. If you talk about a fatty liver, 1 billion people around the world, you know what they need to do? They need to put the fork down. Yeah. And you say, we have hunger problems in this. Said, we shouldn't. There's enough fake food being mass produced right now to feed the world a million times over. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, how are people starving? Like, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. But also, how are we over consuming? Mm -hmm. The four to five meals a day, the snacking, the 2000 calories, the cholesterol, it was all a lie. The human body thrives when we don't eat. Yeah. We were designed to be in a fasted state where our insulin was regulated and it could lock the potential of the mitochondria, right. which if we all look at this, our overall health comes down to how healthy is our mitochondria, the deepest part of each one of our cells. There's mitochondria in the brain, there's mitochondria in the liver. And so you say, okay, well, so can you regenerate the mitochondria of the liver, like the mitochondria one? He said, the answer is yes. And I would say, okay, if all disease comes down to mitochondrial dysfunction and 1 billion people in this world have a fatty liver that's dysfunctional, this is easy. Just <laughs> go straight for the liver. Like that, that's going to solve the diabetes. That's going to solve the heart disease, the dementia. Would it help the leaky gut? It might. Would it help constipation? Would it help with hormones? Because yes, the liver regulates estrogen production. It regulates thyroid production. It even is insulin resistant when you have diabetes. So insulin and the liver go hand in hand. And if your insulin is off because there's insulin receptors throughout the body, if the insulin becomes off at the liver, then your whole metabolic cascade becomes crashing down. And the brain is going to be the last thing standing saying, even if you ate something, dude, we can't poop it out for you. Like mm -hmm. literally, like we cannot poop it out. Like everything down there is shut down. So what happens is you might say, okay, well, how, what's one thing your body can't live without? I'm going to say the liver. There's no absolute way a person could live without the liver. However, we trash our liver on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And here's what I also found out. The liver is also a refrigerator. And when was the last time you cleaned out your fridge? Because all the right. fast food, you and I both, we used to eat junk food all the time. But right. that Burger King from 20 years ago is finally out. I've detoxed every single day for the last seven, eight years, <laughs> changed my diet, gone here, blah, blah, blah. And I finally got that last little bit out. But I'm like, not that high fructose corn syrup. Not that hydrogenated corn oil, not the aspartame that I had when I was 19 because it was diet soda, you know, Red Bull vodka night, you know, like seriously, like, and you think like, 
what the hell was I doing drinking Red Bull and vodka at 1 a.m.? And how is this legal with a problem no, like fatty liver disease going on around the world? You know, and that's what I say. So mm. there's no way that you're going to change the mindset of 1 billion people like that unless mm. you talk to the one individual at a time and say, could you feel better? And they would say, yeah, I could feel better. I mean, I've, I've talked to, I've talked to meth heads for crying out loud. And you know what I asked them? I was like, I was like, do you take vitamins? And they're like, no, we should though. And I'm like, that's cool. And they laughed. And I was like, that's, that's cool. Actually. You know, I was like, would you take some right now? And they were kind of like, what do you mean? And so I had, I had a boost. I had one of those boost nice. packets. Nice. My favorite multivitamin, you know this too. And I, I and, and the ingredients are on there, you know, and it's one little travel packet. And so this is what I did to them. No joke. Aww. I was like, all right, if I give you this, do you trust that it's just vitamins? And they looked at me and there, it was two guys. And I was like, seriously, if you, if, if I give this to you, it's all wrapped. It, you could see it hasn't been opened. It's, you can see the label on the back, the ingredients. These are just vitamins. I own a vitamin su uh, supplement company. These are mine. I take these daily. I, and I reached in my pocket. I gave it to them. And they said, yeah. They said, well, and, and I waited for it. One person goes, well, what do we drink it with? And I was like, yep, there we go. I said, water. And it was in front of a gas station. And so I was like, yeah, you just go inside and get a glass of water. He was like, okay. And I said, seriously, are you going to drink this? I said, because I'm not, not going to give it to you unless you're going to drink it. I love this thing. And he, they looked, I said, no, we're going to drink it. We're going to drink it. And I said, cool. I said, here's what to expect. Because here's the thing. You imagine I could have easily walked away. But I wanted to tell them one more thing to implant what could possibly be. What I imagine is these guys are chasing the ultimate high. And they happen to find one way to get it. The problem is, is that they're very depleted, mm -hmm. right? And so they don't function very well without dopamine, right? We know right. this. Most people right. don't. So I'm like, okay, well, could me giving you something that makes your own dopamine keep you from having to run back to what could be? And so instead of saying it that way, because it sounds judgmental, right? I just said, hey, man, in about an hour, you're going to feel great. And he said, for real? Both of them, they said, for real? And I said, like, yeah, you're going to feel great. So go outside and go do something. Don't just sit around. And they're like, okay, cool. And they like smiled. And I was like, all right, man, I'll see y'all later. And that was it. And I've always wanted to ask them, right? Hey, if I ever yeah. ran into us, I like, hey, man, did you like that? And they're like, yeah, man, that was awesome. What was that <laughs> stuff? I could tell them it was glutathione and methyl B12 and methyl folate. And they're not going to care. They're just saying, dude, I felt amazing. And uh, my follow up question would be once again, because education, well, what did you do after you felt so good? What were you doing? They wouldn't be, I almost, I don't want to say guarantee because I don't like saying that, but imagine you say, I bet you they weren't running back to the pipe. I'm yeah, just not, not in that moment for sure. And I love hearing this story too, because like, I mean, in every event that I've seen you at, this is the role that you play. You're like the candy man, but you've got your boost. You've got, you've got all these little like drinks. You've got a lot of times you'll have the IV bar at events. And it's just like, you come in and it's like, everybody knows they're going to be feeling good because Jonathan's yeah. here, you know? And so I like, love hearing like that Willy you Wonka. did that with like some Willy guys Wonka. that are <laughs> some addicts outside of a gas station. I'm like, of course you did. And that leads me to my, kind of my last thing. I wanted to ask about. So is it still MSW nutrition? Is that your, for your supplements? Is it still MSW nutrition or did you change that too? No, that's that's okay. still, that's still MSW nutrition. Um, for okay. anyone. Okay. Just since I can plug it real quick. Yes. Um, so we love supplements. Tara loves supplements. Uh, we take a bunch of supplements like just, and you and supplements are non-negotiable. Let's just put it that way. So I don't care where people get their supplements. I just want them to be good. And right. I know ours are good. So then I say, okay, if you want some good <laughs> supplements, here you go. You go to mswnutrition.com. You go to Liver Boost. You search for Liver Boost. It used to be Liver Love. Now it's Liver Boost. So lots of change going it's on. It's right like, there. I just saw it. It's right yeah. on the homepage under bestsellers. Yeah, Liver okay. Boost and Boost. Boost and Boost. Make sure okay. you get Boost. <laughs> Both of those. That's what I would start with. Now, mm -hmm. the Boost itself, energy drink. I talked about it. Those guys, B vitamins, they're going to feel great. Bunch of liver support, bunch of brain support. And mm -hmm. it's a coffee replacement. It's a pre-workout, natural green tea, caffeine. You feel great. And it tastes mm -hmm. delicious. Yes. Um, now the liver boost it's, that's where you're like, all right, I want to get serious about my detox. I want to, I want to take care of my liver. What do I take? I, I said, go look at liver boost. There's 16 ingredients in there. It's a recipe. That mm -hmm. whole thing activates is phase one and phase two of liver detoxification, which means you have everything you need in one, one bottle. So I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, you could take NAC, you could take alpha lipoic, you could take turmeric, right. 
or you could take all of that with some dim and some, you know, resveratrol and quercetin or, you know, like, or you could buy 16 different bottles, you know? <laughs> so, when, right. Yeah. And it's a two month supply. And the boosters, I think a month, because I drink it once a day. Some people do it once every other day. This is safe. But those are the first two, liver boost and boost. Those are one of my favorites. Yeah, I can't recommend them enough, you guys. I'm a huge fan of these products. Like, they're very popular. They're like, you guys are definitely like bells of the ball in our end of the health industry of just yeah. optimizers. And it's so appreciated. So make sure you check that out, guys. It's mswnutrition.com, liver boost and boost. But there are a million other things on there, too, you can also check yeah. out. So, yeah, Jonathan. Okay, School of Doza, guys. Can check it out. I will link that up. I'll link up MSW Nutrition. Uh, maybe I can put in your address of your place in Austin in case somebody's like, I want to go to the cool hangout in Austin. Yes, yes <laughs> so I'll put that in there also. Jonathan, thank you so much. It's so good to see you. I'm so proud of you. You have been just busting ass for years, just showing up, showing us just like when it's probably all that boost you drink, but like <laughs> your liver so healthy. It's like when most people would be like, okay, I think I'm just going to settle in. You're like, no, go let's. And it's because of, it's not, yeah, you're entrepreneurial, but it's so obvious that's not even close to your main motivation. It's how do we help more? What is yep. needed? How can I show up more to help? And it's like, it's just awesome. So appreciate it. So seen. We freaking love you. Love Baldo. Love your whole team. You guys are just freaking rock. So thank you for just being you and being on the planet. It's really, honestly, a privilege to know you guys. Freaking adore um, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.